do you actually need a powerful GPU to run a 30 billion parameter model? The answer is no. In this video, I will show you how to run a 30 billion parameter model with 8K context window on a CPU without needing a powerful GPU. We're going to be specifically looking at MPT30B chat model that was released a few days ago. In this video, we are going to be using a quantized version of the model uh, from the bloke. Now, although you do not need a powerful GPU, but you need a lot of RAM. So in this case, we're going to be looking at this 4-bit quantized version for which you need around 19 gigabytes of uh, storage space and you need around 22 gigabyte of RAM. Now, keep in mind that this model supposedly has a context length of 8,000 tokens. So it makes it one of the more powerful open source models. The rest of the video is going to be divided into two parts. In the first part, I will show you this specific repo and we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process of how to download the model and do inference on top of it. In the second part, we're going to look into the code in a lot more details to show you what is happening under the hood. So let's get started. First and foremost, you need to have Conda installed on your computer. So first, we will create a virtual environment. So I'm going to use Conda create, then dash n, and name of the virtual environment. So let's call it MPT30. And then we need to define the Python version that we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to be using Python 3.10.0. So this will create a virtual environment for us. Now it's simply asking me to proceed with the installation of all the packages. Now you can type in a Y, so that will be, be yes. Or if you notice, there are brackets around Y, so that's the default value. So you can simply click enter and this will proceed with the installation. Okay, so our conda environment uh, is ready to use. So I'm going to use this command conda activate and then the version environment that we just created. So when I hit enter, you will see uh, that the virtual environment that we are using has been changed to MPT30. Okay, so we are all set with our virtual environment. Next, we need to go and clone our repo. So we will go back and now you see this green button. Uh, so click on this and copy this address. So after that, go back to your terminal. Okay, next I want to change my working directory. So I'm going to type in CD documents and then I have a GitHub uh, folder in there. So I want to go there. Next, I want to clone the repo. So I'm going to type in git clone and then the address of the repo that we just copied. Now, usually what I want to do is I want to uh, put this in a custom name folder. So let's call this MPT30. Uh, if you do not provide a custom name at the end, it will create a folder with the name of the repo. So let's just hit enter and it will clone everything. Okay, next let's uh, change the current directory to this new directory or a repo that we just created. So I'm going to type in cd mpt. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, mpt30. So you will see that actually the folder in which we are currently working has been changed from GitHub to mpt30. If I type ls, it will simply show me all the files that are within this folder. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to install all the required packages which are under this requirements uh, text file. Okay, so I'm going to type in pip install dash r and then requirements.txt and it will go ahead and require uh, install all the required packages for us. Now the installation is done. So let's go back uh, to the repo and see how do you actually run this. So there are basically uh, two steps in order to uh, download and run this file. First, you actually need to run this script, Python download model, and then you need to run Python inference.py script in order to use the model. Okay, now in order to download a model, you need to run Python download model.py, and it will download the model and put it in a new folder called models. And now keep in mind that this is a relatively big file, so it's going to take a, a while to download. Now, if you do not have a stable internet connection, I would actually recommend you to go back to uh, the blokes uh, repo and within there, uh, click on the uh, files and versions 
and then manually download uh, this specific file. Just put it in the models folder. Okay, uh, so after running the code, if you look inside the models folder, you should see an MPT30B or bit quantized uh, model with a dot bin extension. Now we are all set. Let's go back to terminal and let me show you how you can actually run this. So in order to ask it questions, you can simply run uh, python inference.py and then wait for the model to be loaded. All right, so once the model is loaded, you will see this prompt user and you can provide your initial prompt. So let's say I'm going to ask it uh, who was the first president of USA. Uh, so we're not testing the model, but I just want to show you how it works. Now, when you run your query, uh, it will take a few seconds to generate a response. So it's simply uh, processing your prompt. But once it processes the prompt, um, the generation speed is really good. Uh, it doesn't take a while to actually generate it. Look at this. Like This is the original speed at which it's generating all the tokens. So it says the first president of the United States was George Washington, and he was inaugurated on April 30th, uh, 17. 89 right so the speed of generation is pretty good i'm running this on an m2 uh, with 96 gig of ram however it's currently using around 26 um, gig of ram now according to uh, the book uh, you need a uh, 22 gigabyte of ram to actually run this but i would say you probably need a little bit more than that okay in the second part we are going to be looking at the code in a lot more detail and I'm going to walk you through it, how it's actually working. Okay, so uh, it's simply using uh, Hugging Face Hub to download the model. Uh, so let's look at the code, how it's working. First and foremost, uh, from the Hugging Face, uh, you need to provide the repo or repo ID. So in this case, we were using the bloke mpt30b uh, chash ggml model. Now this code is going to work uh, for all other M ggml based models as well. Uh, so you can just reuse this code. Next, we are defining the model name. Uh, so this is the specific model name that you have to choose. Now, if you recall, we uh, downloaded this specific file. Uh, if you want to use any of the other ones, just uh, simply you provide that uh, file name. Okay. And after that, uh, the name of the folder where you want to put the model. So in this case, we are calling it models but it can be anything. And you don't have to create uh, this folder beforehand. Uh, the, the code will create that folder for you. So it's using this uh, download MPT uh, quant, uh, quant function. And you need to provide the destination folder, the repo ID, model name. And under the hood, it's using the Hugging Face Hub download function from Hugging Face Hub. Now, first, it simply gets the absolute path of the uh, folder name that you have provided, right? and uh, then use the repo id file name uh, the location of that path and then a local uh, directory use uh, sim links so basically it would simply create that folder for you if it doesn't exist and download your dot uh, bin file in there now very soon we are going to be integrating uh, this into local gpt as well so you will be able to run ggml based models in local gpt now, if you do not know what local GPT is, I would recommend watch this video. Okay, next, uh, let me walk you through the inference.py code. Uh, so in this case, uh, it's using the C transformer package. And from the C transformer package, we are importing AutoML for causal LM as well as AutoConfig. Now, first, uh, we're using the generate config class. So these are different parameters that we need to provide in order to use the model. Next uh, is the prompt template that this model uses. So you need to provide uh, your prompt in a very specific format. First, you need to have a system prompt, then the user prompt, and then it will generate a response. So that's the assistant prompt that you get as a result. And uh, it uses these special tokens in order to delineate between these different parts. Now you can go and look at the bloke uh, repo uh, to see the actual prompt template that is being used. Okay, uh, next we have a generate helper function that we are going to come back to in a little bit. 
But before that, uh, let's look at the main script. So first and foremost, you are um, defining the configuration uh, and you are getting those from the pre-trained model. So you simply need to provide uh, the GitHub repo ID and then autoconfig dot from pre-trained. So it will simply look at the configuration of this specific model and get all the configurations. Next, we want to use the auto ML uh, auto model for causal LM. Uh, so here, uh, since we're using a pre-trained model, so you need to provide the path of the downloaded bin file, then uh, the model type and the configurations that we actually got from uh, this specific repo. Uh, so this is basically setting up your LLM. Uh, next, we need to provide the system prompt. So the system prompt that is being used here is a conversation uh, between a user and an LLM based AI assistant named local assistant. Local assistant gives helpful and honest answers. So this is the system prompt that is being used. Okay, after that, uh, we are simply uh, defining all the configurations that we'll need. Now, here uh, you can set the temperature uh, and some other things that you want. Uh, now, uh, we set stream to true, and that's why uh, if you notice in the earlier example, it was generating uh, the response word one word at a time, right? And uh, the maximum number of tokens is basically the number of tokens that uh, are going to be generated. So you can adjust this if you want. And we're using a thread, so we're simply looking at the CPU number of CPUs, and half of those are basically used as threads. And after that, you actually have um, a special token, which is part of the prompt. Okay, so these, these are basically all the configurations that we need to set. Uh, and here is how uh, we want the uh, user and the model interaction to look like. Um, so within the file loop, this is going to uh, run forever. All right, uh, there is absolutely no check. So maybe a better way is uh, to do something like this. If user underscore prompt uh, equal to equal to exit, this is what I'm doing uh, within the local GPT code. So you simply break this, right? Otherwise, you accept an input from the user. Then uh, you take the LLM that you just created, right? Along with the configuration, the system prompt, and the user input, and you go to uh, this uh, generate function. Now, within the generate function, um, it's accepting the LLM configuration system prompt and the user prompt, and then it's calling uh, this format prompt function to uh, format in a, the, the desired format, right? And it will just return you the response. Now, if we go back to our while loop, uh, so you get the generated response, and then you simply uh, show that one word at a time. Now, this is how you can run a 30 billion parameter model on a CPU. And as I said, we're going to be integrate this as a part of local GPT. So you will be able to use uh, quantized models on your CPUs. All you need is a good amount of RAM on your system. I hope uh, you found this video useful. If you are interested in learning more about LLMs or other field of generative AIs, I would recommend you to check out the Discord server. It's actually a growing community of like-minded people who are helping each other out. Link is going to be in the description of the video. If you are working on a product and would like to consult with an expert, check out the description of the video for my services. Consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you found this useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.